<clears throat> oh, hey, uh, I'll be there in a second. So, uh, what can I do for you? Actually, wait, uh, let me guess. You want me to fix that car of yours back there? Well, sure. I might get my guy working on it. Uh, meanwhile, make yourself a home. It's gonna be a while. Nori, vai trabalhar, fi. Tem cliente aqui. While we wait, let me talk to you about what I did this week. I was playing Midnight Club 3. I recently made a video on the two other Midnight Club games and the second one was truly awesome to play. Of course though, I kept getting a huge amount of comments asking me to play the third one. And of course that I should play the remix version. The third game was released in 2005 and exactly 11 months later, Rockstar released a new version of the same game with more cars, more music, more races and the city of Tokyo, which you might remember from my Midnight Club 2 video. Basically what this means is that the original version of the game basically became obsolete. The original was my first experience with Midnight Club but still, there's no real reason you should go back to it instead of looking at the differences. You'd just be getting a lesser experience. Anyway, let me tell you about the presentation this game has. It has honestly one of the best I've ever seen in any video game. You turn on your game to a city and use menus like it's a projector on the side of the building, while you get an instrumental version of Real Big by Many Fresh. I'll talk more about the music later. You then move on to your garage, where you can buy your first car and it's such a vibe. This game has nailed this better than any other racing game in my opinion. You get to choose between an Eclipse, a Jetta, a Dodge Neon SRT4, a Golf, a Monte Carlo or an Impala. In this version you also get a Scion TC which is pretty cool. I decided to start with the Golf as I usually always started with the Eclipse. Just looks so cool. The graphics are very good here, better than Midnight Club 2 but it has a very different style than that game, looking brighter and with lights everywhere. The environment is what still impresses me the most about this game. Everywhere you go is full of stuff that you can destroy, papers fly with the wind behind you, when you hit other cars you can see the glass flying out and holy crap, the sense of speed in this game is unbelievable. Dare I say that it feels better than Need for Speed? Yes, and you can quote me on that one. Even with your starter car, hitting top speed makes you feel scared for your life as you fly out the window yourself if you hit something. Like the second game, you get three cities, San Diego, Atlanta and Detroit. With the addition again of Tokyo from the second game. Not only they are very different and even though I've never been to any of those, accurate, they also have different weathers, like a clear night, a foggy one or even raining. It is pretty awesome to see and Detroit even has snow. The game only takes place during the night but at least you get different times to play. You may get out of the garage during the evening or the very early morning. I rarely saw the morning during my playthrough but when it happens it sure is a beauty. The gameplay, however, might not be everyone's cup of tea, as it is very different from what you might be used to in Need for Speed. If you're coming from the second game, you're gonna be just fine as the car still drives like a kid playing with Hot Wheels. It is pretty hard to get the hang of it, but after you do, you'll be drifting around corners with no problem. Unless you're driving a bike, which is also in the game. You have a selection of 94 vehicles, which is still insane to think about. There's stunners, muscles, sedans, SUVs, exotics, sport bikes and choppers. Choppers! That's something you don't see every day. After beating all the challenges of each city, you also unlock cop cars, which sadly you can't race in but it's still cool to have. And yes, there are cops in this game. They don't serve much purpose besides just screwing with you during the races. And trust me, they will. The amount of races I lost because a cop decided to focus me and just throw me into walls. Don't try fighting it, just outrun them. There's also special abilities in the game depending on the type of vehicle you're driving. So for example, if you're driving a tuner, sports bike or an exotic car, you can drive cleanly to build your meter and use the zone ability. It makes so everything goes in slow motion while you get an enhanced handling of your car for a few seconds. If you are playing with an SUV or a sedan, you get aggro, which you can build by hitting things in your way. It makes so you can hit your opponents or even traffic like nothing happened and push them out of your way. 
In that last, if you drive a chopper or a muscle car, you can build roar by drifting. It is an ability that lets you emit a shockwave that pushes everything around you away from you. Kinda like the one you'd see in Blur. These abilities are very useful in the game as it can get pretty hard later on. Oh, and the customization in this game. It is actually very good. You get a long selection of bumpers, hoods, spoilers and etc. But then if you get a different car like a classic Musco for example, you get completely different customization. It is really awesome and you can spend a lot of time just making different looking cars and bikes, which by the way, you can even put neon on. I think it looks really bad, but fun in a weird way. And the best part is that, instead of having a select few colors for each thing, you can instead pay to select your own color by using a color wheel. It makes the customization miles better, simply for being able to choose the perfect color you want for everything. The wheels, the neon, the nitrous, even the HUD. It's really good and very underrated in my opinion. Of course the game still has a huge following to this day, but it's nowhere near the size of Need for Speed, which is a shame. If there's one thing I feel like is missing is the rims. You do get a good amount of them, but the selection doesn't seem to fit every car. Most of the wheels are what you would usually see in Musco cars or SUVs, so if you're more into tuners, too bad, you only get about 5 wheels to choose from. And the soundtrack. Holy crap, is it awesome. I don't think Rockstar gets enough praise for the selection of songs they got in every game they make and this one is no exception. You got a racing game with a total of 128 songs including genres like rock, hip hop, techno and other stuff. Let me repeat that for you. 128 songs. And it's not like, oh okay, they got a bunch of small musicians and paid them a small fee to be in the game. It's more like, oh, okay, so they got 50 Cent, Kanye, Marilyn Manson, Iggy Pop, Queens of the Stone Age, Fat Joe, Pitbull, Lil Wayne, Nine Inch Nails. It is insane. It is really awesome and not only that, whenever you load into something, you get a loading screen with the beat of different songs in the background. And I know it might sound simple, but I'm 100% sure this is what most people remember when they think of this game. It is iconic. Even as a kid though, if there's one thing I didn't like is that if there's any songs that you don't like, you can't just turn them off. You have to skip them every time they play. It isn't that big of a deal, but I remember changing the genres to only play rock, as that is as much as you can do. And thinking, oh man, why can't they just do it like Need for Speed and let me choose the songs I wanna hear? And at last, let's talk about content for a second. I know I already said this in some of my videos, but one thing that bores me in most newer games is the amount of tracks they come with. I think I talk a bit about this in my Unbound video, but when a game from 2005 had this amount of tracks in it, I don't think there's an excuse for anything less. I don't think you play any races more than once in this game, unless you want to, of course. But not only there are so many different tracks that, because it's an open world racer, there's many different ways to go through, but you can also make your own tracks and play them online or split screen. So even if somehow you play this game so many times that you could play it with your eyes closed, you can make your own or play tracks made by other people. It's really sick. And then you do every tournament for tuners. Alright, is it over? No. You then change to a muscle car and more tournaments for muscle cars show up. Then you do every tournament for muscles. Is it over? No, there's still every other category for you to play. And after you do everything, is it over? Of course not, there's the Tokyo challenge. Like I said in the beginning, it's the same city from the last game, but you have a different campaign to play there now. It is really awesome to play in that map with real cars this time. Uh, in the end, I hope you can tell that I really loved playing this game. It doesn't have too much of a story, even less than the second game, but by the end of it you do a tournament, get a Lamborghini and become the US champion. The game has a huge depth on gameplay, customization, music, environment. It's crazy how much they packed into this game. They even had to use a dual layer DVD which was the first time I heard of when I learned about this game. If you never gave this one a try, I highly advise you to. You will not be disappointed. But anyway, uh, what were we doing? Oh yeah, uh, your car. Uh, apparently we had a problem and we will not be giving it back to you today. I know it's frustrating, but you have to go get a new starter car, then race and open these boxes. If you're lucky enough to get the parts that we need to fix it, we'll fix it. If not, uh, oh well. You can either pay me for more loot boxes or just stay behind the competition, I guess. But yeah, uh, now go, uh, make way for the guy behind you. 
We'll see you again in the future. Oh, and don't forget to leave a like. See you in the next one.